So we're back at Twin Ponds Park in Shoreline, Washington, and it's a nice spring day in April, and we're going to demonstrate some predicate logic proofs. Is that all right? Yeah, let's do that. So we have a nice little proof here, and uh, do you have a comment to make on the syntax on the line one for to begin with? We talked about this earlier. You'll notice there's parentheses around these guys, but there's not parentheses around these. It's largely a matter of presentation. Um, there's nothing wrong with having parentheses here. Technically, they're not really needed. If you remove these parentheses, it would still be clear the quantifier would hook up with FX, and that quantifier would hook up with that HX. But for some people, it kind of seems a little cleaner this way, a little clearer, a little uh, less visually ambiguous. Um, that's me. That's it. But Mark, like Mark, would prefer it cleaner and simpler by he would remove these parentheses and leave it just uh, for all x, fx with no parentheses, horseshoe sum x, hx, no parentheses. I think it's a matter of taste. Yeah. I, for some reason, I've always liked to put the parentheses in here to emphasize that this goes with this and this goes with this, but Mark is right. They're not necessary because the way the sentence is constructed, constructed, there's no place for this to be but with this, and no place for this to be but with this, because of that horseshoe. Yeah. So we won't worry about it too much right okay. here. And you can kind of see how it can look, um, two right. different approaches. Now, the first thing, I'm, I'm going to ask Mark to prove this proof, but the first thing I want to point out is that students oftentimes want to instantiate this first line. Why can you not instantiate this first line? The only time you can take quantifiers off using, say, UI or EI is if the quantifier is the main operator, the main yes. connected. That is the biggest, most common problem it my is. students have yeah. in predicate logic. Yeah. It is absolutely kills problems. I, yeah. I'll repeat it ten times a day, if not more, that I'll I ask them, can I take this off using UI? And I'll, I want them bored or bleeding out of their left ear, they're so bored. They need to see they can't take that off using UI and they cannot take that off using EI. If they could get this all by itself, then they could do UI on this, yeah. take it off. Yeah. If they could get this all by itself, well, that's the main operator, then they could do EI. But that is probably, in my mind, one yeah. of the biggest mistakes I see. It's huge. Really? And same with me. Yeah. Um, I can, I over and over again say that you cannot instantiate unless the quantifier is at the start of the line. It has no tilde over it, and its scope is the whole line. Oh, and students uh, often forget that, and they'll want to instantiate anyway. And so it's a common error. Super I think people get confused by the symbols. Predicate logic is more complex. Yeah, yeah. Easier to get confused with the symbols. So here's the. Let's just emphasize this. You can only instantiate using either UI or EI. If the quantifier is unencumbered by a tilde, it cannot have a tilde over it. The quantifier is at the start of the line all by itself, and its scope is the whole line. Then you can instantiate using UI or EI. So you cannot instantiate this line because it's got two quantifiers. Obviously, then the scope of this quantifier is not the whole line. In fact, let's let's underline the scope of this quantifier. It starts there and goes to there, doesn't it? That's it. And the scope of this quantifier. Goes there. there to there. And for this one, it goes over the entire thing. So that's the main operator. The yes. Main of the yes, thing. good point. That's the main operator. Its scope is the whole. So we cannot do an instantiation on line one. So now, do you want to prove it? Do you need well, this? I'll let you do the writing if you oh, wish. Okay. Just before you write, though, yeah. if you notice if I want to do, I could do UI on line two because that is the main mm -hmm. connective. This is at the beginning. There's no tilde out here. It ranges over the entire thing. So I could do a UI, maybe mm -hmm. get a tilde H, A, mm -hmm. but I don't really want to. What I'm seeing here is this stuff here looks a little bit like this, mm -hmm. and the conclusion looks a little bit like that. Uh -huh. I'm really thinking modus tollens. I'd yeah. love to do a modus tollens on this. This and is let not me remind modus tollens, P to Q, negative. Uh, Neg negation of Q, bring down negation of P. Yeah. So this is not the negation of that though. Mm -hmm. But what I can see is, if I do a QE on this, change a quantifier, I'll get something that looks really, really cool for me. So how about doing a QE on line two? Okay. We'll see what we get. All right, so quantifier exchange, we're gonna actually, I mean, the algorithm is that we take the quantifier and we switch quantifiers. 
we go from the universal to the existential or the existential to the universal and then we add a tilde to each side and then we cancel out double negatives if they result in effect what we do is if we have a single tilde we switch quantifiers and flip that tilde over to the other side in effect, that's how you do QE and quantifier change. So I, tr I switched quantifiers and I flipped the tilde to the other side because there was only one tilde. That right. would be uh, QE2. Okay, that's a good move. Okay, and now we can see what, what I had in mind. My, what I had in mind was getting this thing because this is a negation of that. Here's this, there's that, and I'm denying it. So now I can do a modus tollens, which will give me the negation of this. So that you're doing P horseshoe Q. Yeah negation of the Q, bringing down the negation of the P. Which will be tilde universal X FX. Okay, so I'm just going to bring this down. I'm going to copy it without making any changes. And then I'm just going to put a tilde on it. Okay. And that's modus tollens on one and three. three. Okay. okay. And now we're in the ballpark of what I'm looking for. I've so this is starting to look like that. Yeah, I've got a quantifier, I've got FX. There's a tilde floating around in there. And I notice that if I do a QE on this, on line four, I'll get exactly what I want, and I'll be done. So let's do a QE on line four. Okay. So QE, I take the quantifier and I switch it, swap it out for the other one. Go from the universal to the existential, I change quantifiers. And then, technically speaking, I add a tilde to each side and remove double negatives if they result. But in effect, if there's one tilde, I'll flip it to the other. So we'll flip it. Okay. And that's QE. I have a QE4. Okay. You can use QE on a lot of lines. And you can do it on any, anytime you see a quantifier, there's no restrictions on it. You can do QE here, here, here. Anytime you see a quantifier, you can do a QE. Mm -hmm. And so we flipped it and flopped it. And... Uh, we reached the conclusion, so we finished the proof. Can I make a comment on what you were doing? Mark's thinking, if you listen to him carefully, was all syntactical in nature. He wasn't thinking about the meaning of the sentences that these might be symbolizing. All he was thinking about, in effect, is the syntax. Uh, he was applying the rules syntactically to the formulas, and he was saying, well, you know, I can if I if I do this to this formula, I'll get the negation of this, and if I get the negation of this, I'll get the negation of this, and the negation of this can be turned into this. So he's thinking about symbols and how he can manipulate them using the rules for manipulating symbols, and that's all syntax. Mm -hmm. None of it has to do with the meanings of what sentences these symbols might stand for, right? Mm -hmm. And so this is um, what computers do. Computers operate on symbols following syntactical rules that apply just to the symbols, not to the meanings of the sentences that the symbols might stand for. And so computers are syntactic, syntactical machines that just manipulate symbols without regard to the meaning that the symbols might stand for. And really that's what you were doing. You were kind of thinking like a computer. A little abstract and in the sense abstractly like a computer and that's how we do these proofs we don't we're not really thinking about what they mean are we i hesitate i have a way of Go ahead. trying to visually try to describe this qe move sometimes yeah. students think it's complicated i think qe is one of the easiest moves in logic go ahead this is stupid what but i kind of look like a quantifier <laughs> so imagine if i'm doing change a quantifier Okay, do this all right, last. go ahead. Change a quantum. It's kind of like the Macarena of logic. Oh my God. So you got this, if you got a tilde <laughs> over here, if you want to do a QE, basically change the quantifier and then change the tilde. If there's a tilde over here, you take it off. If there's a tilde over here, you take it off. So if I'm sitting here doing the Macarena and I want to do the QE, I get this. If I'm doing this, I get that. I defy anybody to forget this after this. I swear to God, I think it works. Anyway, it's a macaroni. That logic. was brilliant. <laughs> I'm not even going to try to imitate it. <laughs> but that was good. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I've worked. It's a great, uh, uh, great There's idea. an arm. No arm there. That's my belly. Anyway. Well, very good. Okay. You can edit that out if you wish. No, that's fine. <laughs> Thank you.
Great job.